Good morning, and I do hope you're well. This morning's reading is from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, and finds the Israelites still in the wilderness. The rabble with them began to crave other food, and again the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. The manna was like coriander seed and looked like resin. The people went around gathering it and then ground it in a hand mill or crushed it in a mortar. They cooked it in a pot or made it into loaves and it tasted like something made with olive oil. When the dew settled on the camp at night, the manna also came down. Moses heard the people of every family wailing at the entrance to their tents. The Lord became exceedingly angry, and Moses was troubled. He asked the Lord, Why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you, that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms, as a nurse carries an infant, to the land you promised on oath to our ancestors? Where can I get meat for all these people? They keep wailing to me. Give us meat to eat. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you were going to treat me, please go ahead and kill me. If I have found favour in your eyes, and do not let me face ruin on my own. Two weeks ago, I read a passage from the book of Exodus about the Israelites at the edge of the Red Sea, wishing they'd never left Egypt. In today's reading, the Israelites have crossed the Red Sea and are in the wilderness, being sustained miraculously by manna. But it's never enough for some people, is it? If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions and garlic. This story, set almost two and a half thousand years ago, sounds quite modern. Today, we'd say the Israelites have an entitlement issue. And then there are those irritating people who hark back to a golden age when they lived somewhere else. A priest friend of mine told me that when he was serving as a curate under Archbishop Desmond Tutu in Johannesburg, he came across a number of white Zimbabweans who had left that country after apartheid ended, and the South Africans called them the Wenwees, because they were forever saying, when we lived in Rhodesia. So what of Moses? We read that the Lord became exceedingly angry, and Moses was troubled. Now that's an understatement, if ever there was one. Moses lists the ways in which the people have troubled him, and says to the Lord, if this is how you are going to treat me, please go ahead and kill me. Tensions were running high, and were exacerbated by their close proximity. And what of us? Do we ever behave like this? Are we ever dissatisfied with our lives? Actually, I think it's more than that. I think what really irritated Moses is that the people couldn't see the miracle of the manna for what it was. So the next time we start complaining about something, let's just try putting it in context. Ask ourselves whether it really is that bad. I'm reminded of that rather sentimental Victorian hymn, Count Your Blessings, which starts, When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Amen to that. And now let us pray. Help us, dear Lord, to be people who give thanks for all that we have, for the many blessings that we enjoy. Help us to be people whose glass is always half full and not half empty. But make us also patient with people who find it easy to grumble and want for more. Amen. We continue to pray for peace in Ukraine, using a prayer from Christian aid. We implore you, O merciful God, 
Look with grace upon those who courageously defend their land. Remember the mothers and fathers, the innocent children, widows and orphans, the disabled and helpless, those seeking shelter and refuge, who reach out to you and to their fellow human beings, looking for mercy and compassion. Bless the hearts of those who have already shown great generosity and solidarity, and those who prepare to receive their Ukrainian brothers and sisters in their country's greatest time of need. Bring us together as your children, your creation, and instill in us your strength, wisdom and understanding. May you be praised and glorified, now and for ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. And now we bring all our prayers together in the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Stay safe. Our Monday evening prayers for Ukraine continue tonight at Holy Trinity Church. And remember that Richard Simmons will lead our prayers on Friday.